Here is a Jefferson 8-track tape player from the early 70s. I believe this one has a built-in amplifier. It's Japanese made, was a lower end unit. We have separate left and right volume controls with just a tone high and low switch. And of course the program selector. This was given to me by a friend along with these 8-track tapes. It's your average stuff that senior citizens were listening to in the 70s and 80s. We even have this 8-track entitled Country Hits, Volume 39. And it says on the label, Stereophonic Studio Company. Fantastic, fantastically accurate recreations of top chart music played by our own studio musicians. Wow! Kind of like the 70's version of hit records of the 1960's. Okay, I don't have speakers connected, but let's insert a tape and see if it does, if the tape will rotate. Now I hear some action. But we're not changing channels. And here's the inside of the player. Definitely looks to be late 60s, early 70s, I'd say. And even though this was a cheaper, lower end Japanese unit, it still loads better than the Chinese garbage that they make today. And I'm sure all it needs is a good cleaning. Uh, tell you what, let's get some speakers and connect up to it and see if it'll pass any audio. Okay, here's our fantastically accurate recreation tape. Well, it's working, but I can definitely tell the crosstalk adjustment is off. And these controls are very noisy. Okay, first, let's, ad let's address this noisy control issue. And you probably already know what I'm going to do next, right? And yeah, we're going to spray some of this stuff into the volume controls. Okay, I just realized something. The uh, track changer mechanism is working just fine on this machine. This thing is actually so cheap it doesn't even have program indicator lights. You just have to take a wild guess as to what channel you're on. All we have is a power indicator lamp. Here's a Willie Nelson tape, the electric horseman. It should be a little bit better quality than that knockoff tape. Well, now we're not we're not rolling. I think our belt is slipping. Okay, let's let's do a little something here to this belt. Okay, I just simply removed this belt and cleaned it with some rubber renew and turned it inside out. It will ultimately need to be replaced, but maybe it'll be good enough for right now. And I also remove the flywheel, which obviously contains the capstan. This one was no problem to remove. You just remove the little bracket and the thing just slides up. And I'm going to clean this capstan real good. You can see it has a bunch of junk on it. Okay, here we are. About as good as we're going to get for right now. And obviously still hear the wow and flutter, but... Set and sail, 
Only thing that's going to gonna gonna solve that problem is a new belt and a and a good tear down and cleaning, which I'm really not too interested in doing on this thing right now. Actually, someone on one of the local buy and sell pages was advertising for an 8-track player. They was wanting to buy one, and I'm thinking to myself, well, you'll probably be like everybody else around here, and, you know, I could fix one up for you and have it working like brand new, and then you'd expect to get it for 10 bucks. Because that seems to be the attitude that most people have around here. They, they're they constantly wanting me to find them a record player or a stereo or a this or a that. And then I go to the trouble to fix it up and get it working perfect. And then I tell them the price. Then they about have a heart attack. It's like, oh, I figured it'd be 10 or $15. Well, no, unfortunately, that's not the case, you know. I, I can't very well buy something and then spend hours working on it, getting it to first-class operating condition, not to mention the cost of parts, and sell it for 10 or $15. It just don't work that way. You know, people with that attitude just need to go to the a yard sale or an estate sale and just buy whatever happens to be laying out on the table and take their chances on it. And even after cleaning these pots, they're still staticky, so... You know, this was just a very low-end unit in the early 70s. Well, I actually dug around and found a new old stock belt in my junk, although it's not in that great of shape. Well, track changer mechanism works. You gotta love these eight tracks. Part one of a song, click, then part two. That's about all I'm doing to you. Okay, there you go. The Jefferson 8-track tape player. As good as it's going to get. All right, thanks for watching and more to come later. Okay, before we go, I thought we'd listen to a few more seconds of this lovely country recreations tape. I think it's obvious they recorded it with the levels turned up too high. Castle Bay